flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Copies of the draft meeting minutes <clears throat> have been uh, provided to you all and are on the city website. And I want to commend uh, the various chairs who submitted their minutes. Um, I hope you'll all continue to do so timely. Um, copies of those are on your desk. Communications. Uh, we have a letter from the Safety Tree Project asking us to attend their event on Friday, April 6th. That's on your desk. Now for the resolution. Resolution appointing Commissioner Deeds. Do I have a uh, introduction in a second? Rob and Dewan. A resolution appointing um, Angela Chandler to serve out the remainder of Andrea Girolamo's uh, term on the Conservation Advisory Council. Do I have an introduction in a second? Rich. Second. Down there. A resolution uh, maintaining our depository relationship with the Bank of Green County. We had set out an RFP. They were the only one to respond. And it's a continuation of what we already have. And I have an introduction in a second. Eileen and Calvin. <clears throat> the next resolution is supporting the Conservation Advisory Council's application for assistance under the New York State uh, Department of Economic Conservation Hudson River Estuary Program. This is to help um, the CAC finish with their open space and natural resource inventory. Do I have an introduction in a second? Tiffany and Dewan. Next is a uh, transfer of funds to increase the hours of the Parking Violations Bureau maintenance man. Uh, it's been found that there hasn't been enough hours to do the, to perform the duties necessary and increases it by five additional hours every week. Do I have an introduction and a second? Rob. Okay. This is a petty cash funds for the parking bureau covering such incidental expenses as stamps, tolls, keys, batteries, reimbursements um, to the uh, amount of $50. Do I have a uh, introduction in a second? Tiffany and Dewan. Uh, the next is a resolution ado adopting the New York State Unified Solar Permit. Rich, would you like to explain what this is? Sure. Uh, what this is, is this is one of the 10 tasks of the high impact uh, task for the clean energy com uh, communities. Um, this would be, if this is approved, it would be our third completed task out of the four. Um, what, this all, what this does, and I've spoken to Craig Haig at the Code Enforcement Department about this, um, it just sets together a standard solar permit process that can be used across the board. The idea being that it would decrease the learning curve as well as just help solar permitting happen quicker and faster. And I said those are one of the, uh, would be our third completed, uh, the fourth completed task. Do I have an introduction in a second? 
Mr. Baxter in a second. Come on. Come on. The next resolution authorizes the mayor to enter into the contract with the HCDPA, or I should say the Hudson Community Development and Planning Agency, for administrative support services in connection with the Dunn Warehouse project. As you all probably know, um, we received a grant to uh, restore and support uh, the Dunn Warehouse. This uh, allows HCDPA to manage that grant. Do I have an introduction in a second? Rob? to the youth department and you can see all the uh, Rebecca Nelson, Rachel Silverstein, Elizabeth Lecky, Susan Sharp, the Gottlieb Gallery, Sutton, Sutter Antiques, Our Bookshop, Sassy Lassies, Janet Pulaski and Hudson City Books for a total of $2,869. Introduction in a second. Dewan and Calvin. Next is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into contract with Compost Ticket Management Software. This is the same company that we've been working with, and this just extends the uh, existing contract. An introduction in a second. Tiffany and Rob. Uh, the next resolution authorizes the mayor to execute a short environmental assessment form, the EAF, in connection with the proposed North Bay Trail Connection Project. This is just a, a very sort of minor matter because this project has a long way to go, and it just sort of expedites the process so that by picking the mayor as the person who signs the EAF. Um, do I have an introduction in a second? Kamal and I mean. And the last resolution, this requests the mayor to remove the currently appointed members of the Board of Commissioners of the Hudson Housing Authority and appoint new commissioners. Uh, this has been incorrectly um, advert, or, or reported as an effort to remove the authority. That is not the case. What is being asked here is to remove the mayor's five appointed members of the board. And of course, even if we pass this, it doesn't mean the mayor will do it. Do I, did you want to talk about it, Tiffany? I do. Um, I sent the council uh, the inspection report that was done at Bliss Tower, so I just would just like to read a little segment to the public. Uh, living conditions at, at the Hudson Housing Authority Bliss Towers project has deteriorated well beyond livable. HUD is aware of the building's many issues, yet the situation continues to worsen on the agency's watch. On August 11, 2017, HUD's Real Estate Assessment Center conducted a physical inspection of Hudson Housing Authority five buildings, including Bliss Towers, which occurred nearly eight months after HUD had decided to visit the, that the site needed a visit. Um, I sent you all the report, and it, which it shows 23 out of Hudson Housing Authority 
135 out of 135 residential units. In the sample size, the Hudson Housing Authority received a 54 out of 100 failing mark grade by 35 health inspections and de safety deficiencies. Of 13 are considered life-threatening. It was projected that the entire, if the entire building was inspected, the review would have resulted in 153 health and safety deficiencies. In addition in death, an inspection contracted by HHA with the inspection group incorporated yielded a 14 out of 100 score, which clearly shows mismanagement has been going on for years. Um, there has been an issue that had also taken place back in uh, Saratoga Housing Authority back in 2014, where their community center had been shut down because of they spotted uh, rain that was trickling in from the roof, making tiles crack, bringing in holes in the ceilings, creating mold. This was just in Saratoga Springs in the community room. In Bliss Towers, this is throughout the building. So it is clearly mismanagement, funds are needed, and as a council, we need to do everything that we need to do to show the people that we are concerned for their health and their safety and their living conditions. That is what this is about, and I hope you all stand and join with me. This is not personal, the people are suffering. That's what this is about. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have an introduction and a second? Tiffany and Duan. Uh, still on your desk are uh, proposed laws number nine and one. Yeah, nine and one. And, um, we're putting on your desk, if it's as a new uh, proposed law, number two for this year. And this is extending an exemption on real property taxes for real property owned by veterans who rendered military service during the Cold War pursuant to the New York Real Property Tax Law, Section 458-B. Other communities throughout the county have done this already. Um, we were notified that we were not part of it. Um, it actually probably amounts to very few people in the city. And uh, at this point, can I have an introduction in a second? Eileen and Dominic. Okay, um, we have someone from, do you want to do the, are you, have you been the point person on our guest? Uh, I haven't. Oh, okay. Somebody from a solar company who wanted to do a presentation? Yeah, you can, you can it. Oh, I'll take one too. <laughs> Thank you. You might have to share a couple. East Lake Partners. It was short a few copies, so we'll pass to the spaces between the chairs. Hopefully foster some camaraderie okay. among the council. Um, <coughs> you want to Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, I'm Jamie Fordyce. This is Wendy DeWolf. We're the principals of East Light Partners. We're a renewable energy company um, based in Boston and New York. Um, we're coming uh, before you today because we're uh, developing a solar project, a 7 megawatt solar project, um, in the town of Greenport, just over the border on Vapor Trail, adjacent to the um, uh, the correctional facility there and, uh, and, and the Flanders Industrial Complex. Um, uh, we wanted to come with a, with a little bit of uh, in, uh, background on New York State programs with respect to renewable energy and how they change um, and where this project fits in and a little bit about our, our company. So um, flipping through, this, this, can, this presentation can serve likely for, for um, takeaway material, but um, it will orient us to the project. Um, we are a um, solar development team. We've um, 
uh, developed uh, upwards of 40 megawatts, so about 10 projects of this scale uh, throughout the Northeast, largely in Massachusetts, um, and expanding into New York uh, over the past uh, five years. Can I interrupt you a second? Have sure. you been approved already by Greenport? Uh, no, no. We've, we've just uh, entered into our, um, our site option with the landowner. Oh, okay. Um, we will be going before Greenport, uh, you know, site plan review and spell right. use permit for the, okay. for the project. Um, this presentation is really about um, educating uh, the town of Hudson as a potential buyer of credits that would uh, right. be generated for this project. So the way that um, uh, New York <coughs> policy is set up and program uh, projects of this nature is um, uh, largely in the context of community solar. Um, so, so you have a centralized <coughs> facility where um, where solar is generated, and then the, the generation from that facility is subscribed to can be subscribed up to forty percent to a single customer. In, in which case, you know, the, if, if the city of Hudson were, were of interest and had had sufficient electrical demand to take that amount, that would the city of Hudson would serve as the anchor customer. That's the, the speech, and then the remainder of the uh, facility would be sold to residences and businesses um, in, in a community solar array. So part of the reason we wanted to come up so early in the development of the project is because you know it's very. If you'll kind of read about us a little more, we tend to work with municipalities. We like to be um, an integral part of the community, and so we wanted to get you know as we embark on on the development of this project, which you know we think is. A, a great project site and really could be an asset to the community here. We wanted to kind of start the conversation early and see how maybe, you know, the city could benefit directly from uh, the facility itself. Um, so a few, um, the first few slides are really just about uh, our, our company, our backgrounds uh, individually. Um, you can forward to the project site slide. Um, slide um, where you can see uh, the site denoted um, on a map here. Um, uh, There's no page number, but it's this private site is the top of the Right. So that's location, then if you flip the page, you'll see this is a preliminary layout, very high level. Again, we're just starting the, the process with um, National Grid. We're just starting the process with permitting it with the town of Freeport. Um, so this is, you know, has, doesn't have any approvals, but it could, shows exactly what it, you know, what we could fit on the site. And you know, given uh, you know the zoning call, the uh, zoning code, we can incorporate that into the preliminary design. Typically, we try to find underutilized land. We try to avoid um, getting um, raw land uh, to, to accommodate solar arrays. We've um, done a number of projects on landfills. Um, in this instance, this is not land that's in. Um, uh, agricultural, uh, agricultural production on the border of land, so it's a, it's a very nice site for, for a project of this nature. Um, the, the New York Community Solar Framework, um, as I mentioned, the Community Solar Project is an installation um, whose generation output is shared by a number of different parties. It's, it's a way for folks who um, do not want to or have the ability to put um, solar on the rooftops to benefit from uh, low cost clean energy generation. Uh, it's more cost effective typically to, to centralize the panels in a larger installation. Um, and as I described, up to 40% of the uh, generation can go to a single customer with the remainder going to individuals. And this is all part of this new value distributed energy resources program, which is a new New York State PSC program um, that's came into effect in November. So it's fairly new. There are a few projects. Um, we're kind of on the early lead of, of projects in the state. Um, we have our first project, but we're probably one of the first in the program um, going um, into construction this spring down East Fishkill. Um, we have a project over in Saugerties as well that's going to be on their, their town landfill. Um, we're talking to some other communities as well. Um, and the, the concept is kind of early stage of this program, taking advantage of, of the new, uh, you know, the, the new program coming in and being one of the first projects coming, coming forward. One of the things to understand in terms of how um, these credits are created and generated and valued, um, it's not like net metering. I'm not sure what sort of um, familiarity uh, the, the city has with uh, prior proposals, but it used to be uh, under a framework called net metering, where a kilowatt hour generated at the site would be credited to the to the town's bill as a kilowatt hour produced. Um, 
the new program is, as Wendy mentioned, um, uh, trying to um, recognize the value of generation at that particular location. And so it's not uh, kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour is a dollar for dollar uh, uh, transaction. So um, the value of electricity output at the site might be greater at peak hours in the day uh, and, and not so great at night. Um, so every hour there's a different, there's a varying um, price that the solar facility accumulates in the form of credits and then um, we enter into an agreement with our customers, be they residents or municipalities, um, that transfers those credits at a discounted rate. So um, you can imagine if you generate $100 of credit, typically uh, we will sell that $100 utility bill credit to our customer at $95. Some, something in, in that range so that the customer is never bearing risk that the price at which they entered into an agreement is less than the cost of the generation. So we're bearing that risk, and you, you float with us, um, always generating 5% savings on your electricity. Right. The concept being that this new value stack, as it's called, it, it has three components mainly to it. The energy, which changes on an hourly basis, the capacity, which is, and then the environmental factor. And so we're kind of bearing the risk for what the total cost is, but for every dollar we generate, onto the grid value we get paid by the utility gets monetized on your bill as a utility credit, which basically is a negative you know, dollar on your bill and you only pay us 95 cents on the dollar, basically, for every every credit that you get. Now, it's not as, we understand it's not like, you know, a huge discount, or a 50% discount on, on power. Unfortunately, the new program in New York doesn't, because it's not with retail rates and net metering, it doesn't provide that same kind of wiggle room for, for greater discount value, but it does, um, in this arrangement, you'll always be saving money, and you're able to actually, because it's a monetary credit, not a kilowatt hour credit, you're actually able to discount, or you're able to apply the credits to a larger portion of the bill, because it's supply and delivery, as opposed to just doing it for supply. So there's some benefits of it, but, um, you know, basically, you're, and, and you're support, be able to support local renewable energy in the community. Right. So, so what we propose is um, entering into a so-called utility credit purchase agreement, uh, which over a period of, that's coincident with the useful life of the project, roughly 25 years, um, we would be locking in for a certain amount of, of supply, um, a fixed savings amount for the time. Um, on the last page, we sort of run through some basic numbers, but um, you know, we expect that we uh, generate approximately 3.5 million credits per year, worth approximately $275,000. Um, for every $1 utility credit to the city's account, um, the city would pay uh, the project 95 cents. So you're locking in 5% in a monetary credit, um, and typically we um, try to set a, a floor price of $0.06. Cents. Um, it's important for our financing. Um, so it's a way that Hudson could reduce its electricity costs, um, kind of a no, no risk um, uh, savings from a budgetary perspective, and it's a way to support clean renewable energy uh, as it's uh, being forwarded throughout the state. Okay, thank you. Um, this will go before, send all this information to our Economic Development Committee, okay. to the attention of Rich Bolo, who's been okay. analyzing okay. previous Great. contracts. Okay. And you know, to, so he can really see if, how this would work for us or not. Okay. Um, I hope you're not looking for us to sign anything before you actually. No, do not the contract. No, the the concept again. We just wanted to get in front of you early. Okay. We want to start the conversation. Yeah. We're, I mean, this, you know, ninety-five cents a dollar is what we kind of have done in the past with other um, other municipalities. We're happy to talk about a fixed rate. We're happy to talk about you know other opportunities or ways to incorporate it. It's just so close. You know, it's right nearby, mm -hmm. and it's a great location for it. So we wanted to make sure we were including um, sure. you guys in the conversation. Well, thank you. And as I said, the Economic Development Committee will will look at it. Great. Yeah, you want to give your card to them. Yeah. And um, we have a we have an agenda. We have a full agenda for this coming Thursday's meeting. But what I'll do is um, we'll put on the agenda for next one. Great. And then we'll look over this material now and come back to you with questions. And then maybe next month we could talk a little more in depth. Great. Okay. Great. Thanks. So. Appreciate it. A couple other uh, things. Um, two people were invited tonight who weren't able to attend. <clears throat> one is Nicole Labarge, 
I'm sorry, Nicole Allen from Labarge, um, our new uh, grant writers, and I want them to speak to us, to the council, about forthcoming uh, CFA, which is you know our opportunity to apply for grants, so that all of you find out. You know, if any of you have grant ideas, show them. Um, she's the person to talk to with what you'd like to develop. And this is very early on in the process, so getting her in is a good thing. And I hope to have her maybe at the 20th in our formal meeting, and you can meet her and, and talk to her. Secondly, I was hoping to have Maria Suttmeyer here today because we are trying to start the conversation about the future of JL, uh, John L. Edwards School and you know what role we can have and what happens with that school. As you know, or maybe don't know, the Hudson School District, despite being called the Hudson School District, isn't controlled solely by Hudson, but we're part of five communities that have a role in the school. <clears throat> so we don't, you know, get to determine through our government what happens to that building, but we certainly can make our desires and hopes known. And I'm hoping to start with Maria and, you know, see what happens from then on. But as uh, was suggested last meeting by Supervisor Musman, we will definitely make this part of our agenda. Uh, anything else from council members that you'd like to raise? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I did want to request from uh, the city attorney um, if you could look into with the example that I read of Sarasota Springs and what has happened there because um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the mayor of Saratoga Springs did abolish the board. If you can look into that and see what our mayor can and cannot do and what the council also cannot, can and cannot do. Sure. Thank you. Rich, the one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that the reason I'm pushing this, this solar permit uh, to get these tasks done is that it then opens up the city for some grants uh, for doing like uh, clean energy projects, so it can give the city thirty or eighty thousand dollars. The sooner we get it done, the better. The bigger chunk of money that's left behind, whatever community basically gets to the funding first, gets more money. So the sooner we pass these things, the sooner we get the more money is available to us to do other our own solar projects here in the city. You said this is the third task, right? This will be the third. Yes. So what, how how soon can we get? What's the fourth, and how soon will we get? And the back? fourth is in progress. <clears throat> Anything else from the council? Yes, I mean. Yes, the resolution about uh, removing the people from the Hudson Housing Authority mm -hmm. board. Um, I certainly understand your passion about the situation that you described, and you had mentioned it the other day when we spoke about it. At what point in this process? Is it tonight? Is it next week? Yeah, Do we week. have a chance to hear um, how, I don't even know how long the current members uh, of the board have been on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean it's okay for situations to exist. I just want right. to understand, if, if you would, um, I just want to understand if uh, the folks who are uh, being targeted to be removed uh, really had enough time to make an impact there. Well, I think they will have a time to respond at the, at the next meeting. At the yeah. formal meeting. Okay. And also, I would like to address your question since you directed it to me. Um, you have board members that have been on for uh, two former mayors and also appointed from our last uh, mayor. Um, and the report that I sent to you all was an inspection that was done in 2017 of ongoing situations that's been going on for years. So like I said, clearly it's mismanagement. We, would, we should have people on the board that is going to manage the building correctly. Uh, situations of mold and deterioration and holes from the roof trickling down is outgoing, horrible for the residents. They shouldn't have to live like that. I know you wouldn't want to live like that, would you? 
No. I don't think you find no. disagreement with that point among anybody. So I, I'm I just answering your question. Them. These board members were not appointed yesterday or January of 2017. Like I said, board members, some board members have been on since Mayor Hanbeck and also Mayor Hamilton, uh, former mayor. And I appreciate it. That's the kind of information that I think is and is good to know before we vote. I think you have the excuse me, sorry. sorry. And you have the report that I also emailed to you. So if you did not receive it, let me know. It yeah. is the HUD inspection report that was done on 2017. As I read to you, it was. Ready? Ready? I think uh, between now and then. The people involved will be aware of this and want to come in at the next meeting and make their case if they have a case. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only way we can do it. Since they, you know, they didn't, they weren't uh, made aware of it ha coming up tonight, right. but uh, they'll certainly get a chance to to, to speak to the council. Rich, um, one more question: If it does pass, um, does that? Does the council itself have the power? To the mayor appoint. You know, we can do recommendations to the mayor, but the mayor can either take our our recommendations or just go with his own. So we're passing a recommendation. Yes. To remove it. Yes. yes. Second point. Just clear. Is that all? Motion to adjourn. Oh. Public comment. Oh, could I oh wait, I didn't recognize you yet. I <laughs> don't <laughs> <laughs> know who I am. <laughs> Former Supervisor Thurston, would you like to speak? Yes, please. I, I just need to ask a question. Um, you say the mayor appoints five people. How many people are on the board altogether? It's a total of seven people that make up the board. So the way it is made up will be the mayor appoints five members, and two of the members are voted through the residents of the building. I so see. it would be two tenants and yeah. five board. Thank you. Yeah. Are you are you uh, asking to have them removed as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just ask you. Supervisor Mustang. No, as as long as I've been in Hudson, Bliss Towers has been an issue about repairs, the elevator not working. I mean, it seems that this is an ongoing problem, and where the uh, responsibility and who's at fault lies. I think uh, something needs to move forward and address the problems of Bliss Towers so that people have an opportunity to live in a healthy and positive environment. So would like to hear from the board and the people that are, you know, have been working on it and what's going on and how to fix it. Like I said, um, this is an issue that I've been working on for the past four or five years where um, different people that live in the building and currently still live in the building have given pictures, the videos that has been sent to uh, Lisa Palugi in Buffalo, who is the overseer. Um, nothing has been done, you know. So we're, we're looking for help anywhere that we can. The building needs help. The residence needs a safe place to live. This has been going on for decades. This is, like I said, this is not something that happened overnight. And, you know, if you're never into the building, take a look. Go inside. It's a public building. They have public board meetings that are open to the public. Speak to the people that live there. You know, some people are afraid to speak up, and they'll tell you that they're fine. They'll tell you that they're fine because they're afraid of eviction. They're afraid to speak up. And some people are not, and they will let you into the apartment, and you can see their living conditions with their family and their children. And it's not right. It's not right. You know, this has been going on, like you said, for many years. For many years, some board members have been appointed since Mayor Hollenbeck, but this has been going on since before that. But throughout all this time, the people are suffering. The building is deteriorating. Thank you. Yes, guys, anybody? Yeah, I'm Alan Weaver. I'm the chair of the board of the Hudson Housing Authority. And um, actually, our new ED initiated, mm -hmm. our new e executive director, Tim Mattis, uh, 
instituted a six uh, program when he came on board six months ago. So there's been many changes made uh, in the building within just the last six months. And uh, we welcome every, anyone and everyone attending our board meetings. Um, and I would just like to point out that many of the board members were appointed by Ms. Garrigo. So No, I, I don't have the authority to appoint. And I've got an email from you that says so. Okay. Read it. Alan, Can, I got a yes. question. Yes. Dominic. Okay. Is there a lease to all the tenants? Yes. Is there a tenant's grievance? Yes. Anybody can, I mean, with building problems, they can put in a work order. No, I'm asking, well, work orders, but they can do a work order, but if it's job done, done, job done, done. I'm saying, is there a legal recourse that the tenants have upon their lease if there are certain things aren't done? Can they sue remedy through a tenant uh, agreement or? Oh, yes, yeah, they, they, they can contact. Until it gets, to it gets done. They can contact HUD directly. We hear from HUD all the time. We've already heard back from HUD concerning this whole thing. Can you explain some of the changes that no. took place no, uh, the past six months that you just mentioned? Because, um, I mean, when I hear a safety rating of 14 out of 100, that... Well, it's interesting that you bring And even, I saw the counter said 73 okay. out of 100, which is still... Let basement. me explain what that is. Basically, when Tim came to the building, he said, when was the last time this building was inspected? And I've been on the board for three years, and the building has never been inspected. We had the same ED for 25 years. Nothing got done. Uh, we had an interim ED for six months. He came. He left. Tim joined us last September. He hired. He brought, came to the board, said, we need to inspect the building. We hired the inspection group, as Ms. Gariga stated. They did an entire, they inspected every unit in the building. We have a 47-page report. Uh, we have s increased our staff to work on the building and all of the health and safety issues from that um, report have been addressed and remedied. Uh, we have an ongoing plan to continue to improve the building and we are currently working on a RAD conversion because we cannot go out and get uh, borrow money against the building. Uh, we're not allowed to do that by HUD. All our financing comes from HUD. HUD finances our budget at 85% of what our budget is. So, you know, we are definitely working on the building in ways it hasn't been worked on in decades, as Tiffany said. And, um, you know, you're, uh, everyone is welcome to come and tour the building. I, I, we have many vacant apartments. We are currently in the process of taking some apartments offline so that they can be rehabbed so that we can take tenants that are in apartments that are in bad shape for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, the tenant didn't let people in or the, they had leaks in their apartment. We're moving them into the rehab apartments so that we can get into their apartments and rehab them. You know, I mean, nobody's being removed from their apartment for anything other than lack of paying their rent. And, is, that, and, is that report available to tenants or to... Uh, uh, you're welcome. Just, you know what? You're welcome to come and look at it if you want. I mean, it's, it's, it's it, you know, a lot of it is just, you know, no bars on the window, no plates on the outlets, uh, no fire, you know, no um, battery in the, in the smoke detector. But uh, you're welcome to come and meet with uh, Tim. I know that uh, uh, Dewan has been to meet with Tim along with Abdu and uh, Billy Hughes uh, last week. Uh, so, yes. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. You don't <laughs> Sorry, but she was the first. I'll get, I'll get you. Yeah. Direct. Um, could you? Yeah. So very a quick question. Um, yes. You mentioned that there has been neglect. Yes. Who are you? On, on, my name is Heather Morris, and I'm, okay. I'm here from Hillsdale this evening. Okay. I, I, I'm not representing any. Oh, okay. I'm a citizen of the county. And um, so with the neglect that you agree has been ongoing, um, who is going to hold pe those people responsible for acting ne negligently to the point where the residents' lives are threatened 
Uh, well, here's basically what happened. Uh, when I came on board, we have a, had a previous ED who kind of ran the building as his, uh, uh, he didn't take much direction from the board, let's put it. Um, that w The board did not renew his contract, so he resigned. Uh, for three months, we were without a, an executive director, and we hired, uh, we hired an executive director who actually worked at HUD Buffalo, who was with us for six months. He was with us for four months and then gave his notice. Uh, when he left, we fortunately hired Tim Mattis, who had been the, with the Gloversville Housing Authority. Um, also, back to that report. That report is something that we instigated on our own, the board, under Tim's guidance. We hired the inspection group. They did a, a total building inspection, and, and they're the ones that said we got a 14 out of 100. That is not the HUD report. What matters to HUD is their report. Um, the inspection group actually inspects based on REACT standards, which are HUD standards. So under HUD, from our last inspection report, we scored a 76 out of 100, or 73 out of 100, I forget. Um, but, uh, you know, so that is something that the board and our new ED instigated to address the problems of the building. So with the report that scored, uh, 14 or whatever it was. Um, are you taking recommendations from that? Because oh yeah, yeah. Actually, that's, that's what that's the report that had all the health and safety issues in it, which have been addressed. You know, in, in every apartment. You know, it's ongoing. Uh, it, the things that needed to be addressed in the building were not. You know, for the last 25 years, and um, unfortunately, we're playing catch up. You know, um, so. Uh, in a second, sir. So Tiffany is next. Um, I wanted to say, you know, it's, it, it's, it's definitely needed when you have a tremendous amount of mold and leakage in your apartment that is HUD standards to have to move you into what is available. But if you have what is going on in Bliss Towers, for example, with the plumbing and the roof damage where the water is trickling down, people are moving from apartments to apartments to apartments all the time, each year. You can ask the residents yourselves. That's the problem. The building needs funding. That's one of the issues. And as Alan Weaver just stated earlier, the executive director, then Tim Matisse, just came in and directed the board. That is the issue. The board should be directing the executive director. That is the board. They are the management of the building. The executive director take the recommendations from the board. I mean, this has been going on for years. The people need good living conditions. This is, this is what's necessary. Thank you. Shusha, you want yeah, to Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, you were mentioning you were in the board in three years? Yes. And three years, uh, that building was not inspected, right? Uh, it's inspected once a year by HUD. Our inspection last year was a 73, the year before that was an 85. So I'm asking in that three years, it was inspected? By HUD, yes, by we HUD. get inspected once a year so by what HUD. what was the report uh, from the inspection? From that, well, the, what we, we basically get a grade out of 100. Last year was 73, the year before was 85. I forget what the year before that was. So when people are complaining, they are like, you know, mold and like, you know, breaking stuff is not a legal. Well, I was been a couple of times in there too. Yes. In a couple of meetings. Yes. And what action you guys take for that? But well, we're working on that right now. I mean, basically, you know, we were without an ED for, for three months. We had an ED who quit after four months. This ED has been there for six months, and he's accomplished more in six months than anybody's accomplished in the two, uh, it'll be three years in April that I've been on the board. Well, wow, that... And, and just to, to go back to what Tiffany said, uh, uh, this is true. We do need a new roof. I mean, the building is uh, in severe need of attention, and it has gone for years without it. You know, and we finally have uh, a plan in place and uh, a board and an ED that are working hand in hand, okay? I think you probably understand why the council would, would like to finally have some uh, say or some communication with what goes on at the HHA. 
because um, it hasn't previously. Uh, and we all are concerned about it. You know, Bliss Towers has always been a, something we think about and worry about, but we've had no connection to be able to do anything. So this is just one small gesture, I think, for us to, to assert that we would like to see some things happen there. And I think you mentioned Bliss Towers in, uh, in your uh, run-up to the presidency of the Common Council. I did. Yeah, yeah I did. Because yeah. I, I, with Tiffany, I've toured it a number of times, and, you know, it's just appalling. Well, no one is in uh, disagreement with Tiffany about the condition of the building. The remedy is what's taking a while, you know. I mean, uh, and... Well, I hope you'll come to our next meeting, because, you know, I'm sure it's going to come up again before we finally vote on the resolution. I'll be here. Thank you. Um, Rich, I'll get to you. Sorry. What are the current length of terms for the board members? Uh, the mayor appoints five-year members. Uh, Five members for well, they five members for five years, okay, and uh, the tenants elect two members for two years. Every two years, we elect new tenant. Uh, so, are all the board members? Uh, is, is it staggered times? Yes. When? Yes, actually, uh, Barbara Hall, who is a tenant commissioner, and myself have been on the board the longest. Uh, you know, everyone else. Uh, I, I believe Peggy's been there for about a year, and uh, uh, Anthony Pestel has been there about a year, so. Yes, could you identify yourself and stand up, please? Yeah, uh, Lou Barnes, Stuart Hudson, uh, just a clarification, um, the, the next HHA board meeting Wednesday is Wednesday night at 6 o'clock okay. in the community room. Cool. Please come. Just wanted that out there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we'll see you then. Um, and thank you for Alan for coming and speaking up. And when you do come to the next meeting, you'll see that the lobby was done over. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. One last comment. Nick was first board. Um, I said one quick question further back in the agenda of the uh, HCDPA agreement. Yes. Is that money that will be reimbursed after the from administrative fees from the grant? Yes. It will be. Oh, no. Sorry. You're no, not. that's just an outright we're paying that's that. Just, we're paying that to administer the, uh, it's, it's, I believe, a $500,000. $500,000, yeah. 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 That's right. It won't be reimbursed. Well, I mean, it does have to be administered. I mean, you do need a private check. That's what I'm wondering if there was administrative, no. if in that grant there's the ability to do stuff, no, or if... Oh, they should be in meeting. It was clear that they do not get any administrative um, reimbursement. Yes, Rich. And can, I, uh, can anyone set up a tour if they wanted to? Yes, actually. Yes, you can contact Tim anytime. Okay. Yes, young lady. Identify yourself, please. My name is Charmaine Actor. I'm a youth in action from Operation Unite. Um, I just wanted to invite all the aldermen and all the women to our Hudson Youth Government Day that we have on April 26th. Um, letters of invite will be sent out. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Come on. Motion. Second. Rob, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.